In this section, we will cover puncturing. Puncturing is used in conjunction with forward air correction. It's a block that follows the convolutional encoder. And at the receiver, there's a depuncture block. And then, of course, the output of the depuncture goes to the Viterbi decoder. What puncturing does is, since the convolutional encoder adds redundancy, in a half rate encoder for every one bit we generate two bits at the output so there's a lot of redundancy in the output in order to do error correction at the receiver what puncturing does is it takes some of these bits and tosses them away and the depuncture replaces those bits with dummy bits and the idea is that the Viterbi decoder can correct for those bits that were tossed away even though we insert dummy bits the Viterbi decoder is very good at correcting errors and these are placed in certain positions that are not adjacent and may look like random errors and the Viterbi decoder goes ahead and corrects those. So what do we gain by using puncturing? Puncturing is useful in cases where we have higher SNR in which case we can use a higher data rate and achieve a better throughput exploiting the fact that we have higher SNR by actually throwing away some of the redundant bits but maintaining enough so that the Viterbi decoder can still achieve error correction. In the following we will explain how puncturing works and it can improve throughput especially when the SNR or signal noise ratio is high. This diagram, which is from the 802.11a standard, uh, illustrates puncturing for the three-quarter of a rate uh, coding, the code rate, which is three-quarters, and we'll explain where that number comes from. And this is, for example, used in uh, 54 megabits per second. To achieve 54 megabits per second in 802.11a, we have to use puncturing. Here the source data is shown. It is the output of the scrambler, but contains the actual data. And this block here shows the output of the convolutional encoder. So for every bit input bit, we generate two bits. So here we have eight input bits, and we get 16 bits at the output of the convolutional encoder. And puncturing for three, three quarter of a rate, you see that certain bits are stolen. What is meant by stolen is that we actually toss these away, throw them out, and then line up the remaining bits right after each other. So you see that we have bit A0, B0, A1, there is no B1, you skip to B2. So B1 is eliminated. So we have A0, B0, A1, no B1 but B2. B, B, B1 was eliminated. Similarly when we go to the case where we have A1, B2, and then we have no A2. A2 was eliminated. So this string of bits here is composed of the original bits without the stolen bits. And now at the receiver, we know exactly where we stole the bits or threw them away. So at the receiver, when we receive this sequence here, we insert the, a dummy bit for each bit that was stolen, and these dummy bits could be zero, for example. And we get the original uh, half-rate coded bits, but of course with errors because these are inserted dummy bits. So the Viterbi decoder can actually correct the sequence even with the dummy bits and derive the correct input message using the Viterbi decoder, obviously. This is due to the fact that the Viterbi decoder is, is very good at correcting for uh, random bits and also has an effective, uh, effectively large D-min. And in this case, we obviously need to use a Viterbi decoder with a longer uh, traceback buffer. So here we get the decoded data. To further illustrate the operation of uh, puncturing, uh, this, this picture here is, illustrates the whole concept. We have data that's generated at the data rate R sub B, goes through the scrambler. If the scrambler just randomizes the data, the data goes through the convolutional encoder and the rate is doubled. So for every bit, we get two bits out here. And we're obviously adding redundancy in order to do uh, error correction. 
Now, skipping the puncturing, we would norm normally go to the mapper and map, for example, every four bits in the case of 16QAM to a carrier, group the carriers, and perform the inverse FFT on 64 carriers, including pilots and guard intervals and so forth. Add the cyclic prefix, and we have the OFDM symbol. The OFDM symbol would then contain, in effect, the coded data, which represents this data shown over here. The coded data being at the half rate. Now, on the bottom, we show the same data sequence coming in, but uh, we go through the puncture block and then take the data and map it with the toss bits, map it to the carriers, again using, for example, 64 K QAM, every sixth bit would be mapped to a carrier. Now, what we're showing here is the fact that for the same OFDM symbol, if we do not use puncturing, where we use the full half rate and all of the redundancy, then this amount of data would fit into this OFDM symbol. But if we did use puncturing, and this data is shown before the convolution encoder, when we use puncturing, since we're tossing away the bits, we actually map more data into the OFDM symbol. Now notice that these red data bits shown here are not, uh, these are before convolutional encoder. So by actually puncturing or tossing away those stolen bits, we're actually allowing for more data to fit within the OFDM symbol compared to the case where we have no puncturing at all. Therefore, we increase the throughput when we use puncturing. Here we have an example of a convolutional encoder output, which is a sequence of uh, bits. For the case of uh, three and a quarter code rate, we're showing that certain bit positions, we're going to steal these bit positions. That is, we're going to toss these away at these locations that are shown in red. We're just going to throw these bits away. And here we have the sequence after puncturing. So we've tossed these bit positions away. So we've thrown away these bit positions after puncturing. Then we take the sequence and map them to the carriers, all 48 carriers for 64 QIM in this case. At the receiver, once we decode the bit stream out of the demapper, we know exactly what positions we stole the bits from, so we insert dummy bits in those positions, and we recover with, albeit errors, due to the dummy bits, the original uh, coded bit stream. And this is the coded bit stream that is input to the Viterbi decoder. And the Viterbi decoder will actually correct, in a high SNR situation, correct for these dummy bits and decode the message. Let's go over how we get the coding rate, again, with puncturing. Here's the source data. We have nine bits. The nine bits are input to the convolution encoder, which is a half rate encoder. So we get two times nine bits, or 18 bits, with the convolution encoder. This, of course, includes all the redundancy. Now, in puncturing, we take, in this case, six bits, and we toss them away. These are stolen bits. So we are left with 18 minus six, or 12 bits. So we have 12 bits here. So for every 9 bits, we get 12 coded bits. So we take the ratio 9 over 12, and we get a 3 and a quarter rate. In the case of a 2 -third code rate, we have here 6 bits. Going through the convolution encoder, we get 12 bits. We're tossing away 3 bits, so we're left with 9 bits. So you take the ratio between 6 and 9 bits, and you obtain the 2 and a third coding rate. This table shows the parameters for 54 megabit per second in 802.11a. So the data rate that we want to achieve is 54 megabits per second. The modulation is using 64 QAM. So every 6 bits is mapped to a carrier. 
Our target code rate is three quarter, three and a fourth. The number of coded bits per subcarrier is six because the subcarriers recall that every six bit out of the convolution encoder, and in our case following the puncturing, is mapped to a carrier every six bit. We have 48 carriers per OFDM symbol. Each carrier carries six bits, so the total number of bits coded bits per OFDM symbol is 288. In the case of puncturing with uh, three and a quarter, the actual number of data bits in the OFDM symbol is 216 data bits. Now if we did not do any puncturing, then recall that every bit created two bits at the output of the convolution encoder and we had a lot of redundancy whereas in the case of three and a quarter coding rate we're actually reducing the redundancy but not at the expense of error correcting capability by the Viterbi decoder so as we showed over here in this example here we will have more data in the OFDM symbol due to puncturing in this case if we did not do any puncturing, then the amount of data bits within the OFDM symbol would only be 144, and our coding rate would be one half. In the case of 802.11a, we have 288 coded bits per OFDM symbol. Now, this includes, for the case of 54 megabits per second, this includes puncturing. We have 288 coded bits per OFDM symbol including puncturing and we send the OFDM symbol over a time duration of four microseconds so if we take 288 coded bits and divide it by four microseconds our over-the-air bit rate is 72 megabits per second however our useful or actual data rate is 54 megabits per second and how do we get that basically every four microseconds which is the length of the OFDM symbol obviously including the cyclic prefix, we're sending 216 bits which represent data. So if you take 216 bits over here, divide it by 4 microseconds, and we get 54 megabits per second, which is the actual data rate. 72 megabits per second is the actual over-the-air data rate, but it includes redundant bits for error correcting. Another way to get the coding rate is to divide 54 by 72, and you get the three and a quarter. The coding rate can also be derived by dividing the number of data bits per OFDM symbol by the number of coded bits per OFDM symbol. We get three and a quarter. Here we show the case where the rate is two and a third, where we again stealing bits but less number of bits. So this is a little bit more robust in the case of three and a quarter. So this table is very important. We'll go over it. Here we have the data rates that are supported by 802.11a. 6 megabits per second, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, and 54. Notice that in the case of 48 and 54 megabits per second, both are using 64 QAM. So why do we have the two different data rates? That goes back to our puncturing. In the case of 54 megabits per second, we use three and a quarter coding rate. We have six bits per carrier in both cases. In both cases, we have 288 coded bits per OFDM symbol. That's including puncturing. However, in the case of 48 megabits per second, we're doing less puncturing, stealing less amount of bits, so there are more redundant bits in the 288 coded bits compared to the case of 54 megabits per second where we're doing more puncturing and therefore we have greater number of data bits per number of coded bits and of course this decrease in the number of data bits translates to a lower effective data rate the table also shows that puncturing is used for other modulation. For example, in the case of BPSK, the half rate code means you don't do any puncturing at all. In this case, you have 
the number of coded bits per carrier is equal to 48 because you have one bit per carrier and you have 48 carriers and the number of data bits is 24 which is half the number of coded bits because we're using a half rate convolutional encoder in the case of uh, BPSK with three and a quarter coding rate in that case the number of data bits per OFDM symbol has increased where we've reduced the number of redundant bits due to puncturing issues when you use puncturing typically you would achieve higher throughput but you have to have a higher SNR compared to the case where you don't use puncturing that means that and this comes in handy when when you're closer to an access point for example and you can take advantage of a higher rate using puncturing because your signal to noise ratio is high obviously the further you're away from the access point then you would have to actually reduce the rate and go to a case where you use less less puncturing as we mentioned because puncturing actually steals bits that the Viterbi decoder has to correct when you insert the dummy bits then that requires that the Viterbi decoder use a longer traceback depth so when you implement it in hardware this translates to a more more hardware complexity for the Viterbi decoder otherwise you have a nice selection of data rates and you can using puncturing you can take advantage of cases where you're near the access point to increase the throughput of your wireless communication link here we have a table which shows the free distance for the Turby decoder for half rate convolutional encoder and it shows that the free distance for a half rate convolutional encoder with constraint length k equals 7 is 10 which indicates how powerful the convolutional encoder combined with the Viterbi decoder is in terms of correcting for errors in the channel the higher the free distance the better the error correcting capability of the encoder and decoder in the FEC now when we do puncturing as we mentioned you throw away redundant bits and therefore you increase the throughput or bit rate and you usually do puncturing when you have a higher signal to noise ratio by throwing away bits and reinserting dummy bits at the receiver we expect to lose some performance and this is shown here where for the case we, where we have a rate of two and a third and we're using puncturing the free distance has decreased from 10 to 6 and this is showing that in fact by using puncturing we are losing some of the capability to correct for errors uh, and of course we usually use puncturing where we have higher SNR in order to get a higher throughput we see that the more puncturing we do for example when we have a rate of three and a quarter then the free distance went down from six to five and if we go to a rate five over six a coding rate five over six with puncturing then the free distance went all the way down from 10 to 4 but by the way this table is uh, table 116AF which is in the IEEE 802.16A standard and it is very informative in terms of the performance of the convolution encoder with the Turby decoder with constraint k equals 7 with puncturing and different coding rates